Welcome back to our channel, where we bring you the latest news and updates from around the globe. First up is news about regulated entities of RBI. The Reserve Bank of India, RBI, has implemented an omnibus framework for recognizing self-regulatory organizations, SROs, for its regulated entities, RE. Each sector of regulated enterprises, such as fintechs, will have its own SRO. Following the finalization of the framework, the RBI will accept applications from firms seeking SRO status. The expansion of renewable energy and the rising acceptance of novel technologies necessitated the development of higher industry standards for self-regulation. The Omnibus Framework defines the objectives, responsibilities, eligibility requirements, governance norms, and application process for SRO recognition. Guidelines applicable to each area will be released individually. SROs are supposed to function with integrity, objectivity, and responsibility while subject to regulatory scrutiny in order to improve compliance and sectoral development. Next, we have the juvenile idiopathic arthritis. On March 18th, specialists emphasized the significance of early detection for rheumatic disorders in young people. Juvenile idiopathic arthritis, JIA, refers to a group of autoimmune or autoinflammatory disorders in which the immune system destroys cells and tissues in the body, particularly the synovium surrounding joints. Symptoms include joint discomfort, stiffness, redness, swelling, weariness, blood-red vision, rash, and a high temperature. In a child under 16, the diagnosis is joint inflammation that lasts at least six weeks after other illnesses have been ruled out. Treatment seeks to regulate inflammation, alleviate symptoms, prevent damage, and achieve remission, with early aggressive treatment being critical for disease management. In the long news section last, we have carbon capture plants, the IPCC identified CCS as having the highest cost and the lowest net emission reduction potential in the energy and industrial sectors. Despite its growing global popularity, CCS encounters obstacles and disappointments, frequently underperforming or failing to fulfill expectations. Technical challenges, such as obtaining desirable, CO2, capture rates, and the huge capital expenditure necessary, are significant roadblocks. The oil and gas industry, which previously lacked a commercial justification for CCS, is now demonstrating support, particularly through government subsidies. While CCS may be viable in hard-to-abate industries such as steel and cement, its present adoption is limited due to cost and the development of other options. Re-evaluation of CCS's role in climate action is necessary, considering its price and potential downsides compared to alternative decarbonization technologies. The first thing in the news between the lines we have is Shanghai Cooperation Organization. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO, is an intergovernmental organization established in 2001 to promote regional cooperation among its eight members, China, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, India, and Pakistan. The SCO's goals include combating terrorism, boosting economic development, encouraging cultural interaction, and promoting a more democratic world order. Next, we have International Monetary Fund. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, has secured a staff-level agreement with Sri Lanka on a USD 337 million bailout package. The IMF, founded in 1944, has 190 member countries and provides financial assistance to countries experiencing balance of payments problems, which is frequently linked to economic reforms. It is headquartered in Washington, D.C., and India is a founding member. Thirdly, we have Aralam Wildlife Sanctuary. A team of 60 Kanno Forest Division workers from the Aralam Wildlife Sanctuary arrested a two-year-old tiger that had caused panic among villages near Adakatudu in Kelakam, Kannur. The sanctuary, created in 1984, is Kerala's northernmost wildlife sanctuary, bordering Karnataka's Brahmagiri. Wildlife sanctuary and Wayanad woods, which are home to a rich range of animals. Next we have the Great Indian Bustard. The Supreme Court appointed an expert team to strike a compromise between saving the critically endangered Great Indian Bustard and India's commitment to renewable energy. The bird, notable for its size and habitat in dry places, is threatened by collisions with electricity wires. India's conservation initiatives are consistent with international agreements such as the CBD and CMS. Last we have sound laser. Scientists in China have created a revolutionary sound laser that produces sound particles rather than light. Similar to a light laser, it employs 
sound amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, SASA, principles, which were first realized in 2009. This method uses two light beams to lift a silica bead, resulting in enhanced phonons for the sound laser beam. That wraps up our coverage for the day. Thanks for joining us. If you found the video insightful, make sure to like, share and subscribe for more such insightful content. You can also download the PDF of this article from the link given in the description below. Stay informed and stay engaged in these critical issues.